So let's check out Herc's one-on-one -on -one interview with the new general manager of the LA Galaxy, Will Koontz, from last week. Here it is. Will, historic day. Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, really excited. Really excited. Glad about the work we did this offseason. All right, let's start at the beginning. Talk to me about the decision for you to leave LAFC and come to the Galaxy. How did that come about? Was it a difficult decision for you? Yeah, it's always a difficult decision to leave a club where you've had a lot of success. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to be there for the start of it and help build it. But I've had a history with the Galaxy that goes back 10 years when I started working with the league, when Bruce Arena was here. And, you know, you, you never have hesitation about coming to a club like this with the resources, the facilities, the, the history behind it. You know, well, Dan Beckerman, AEG, they've been big players in Major League Soccer for quite some time. And we have to go back to pre-Beckham years to think about a Galaxy that doesn't have a massive name. It's been that long. Does the LA Galaxy need a massive name, need a big player like that? I, I think we need massive players, right? And, and one thing I've said is that I'm not so concerned about star taking, but star making. You know, we're in Hollywood. We've got great fans. Uh, we've got great history. If we have players who are dynamic, score goals, win games, the rest will take care of itself. Now, that's not saying that the Galaxy won't go and get a big player. Is there a big player in their future, or for the time being, the model has changed? No, I, th I think what you've seen in the league is that uh, the, the growth of MLS in terms of reputation uh, has been massive. The Galaxy are still obviously a huge club. There's still going to be an opportunity to add players who are maybe at the end of their career uh, who have big legacies. They don't necessarily need to be DPs anymore. What do the Galaxy need to do to come back to that grand -esque history I mean that one's easy that's just win games right win trophies is it that easy uh, I mean it's not easy to do but it's uh, <laughs> the goal is easy right and I think uh, you know winning isn't just you know a result on the field it's a mindset right it's how we go about our business every day it's carrying ourselves with pride you know being hungry being competitive and making sure that every day we're trying to get better well one of those winners here in Los Angeles over the years has been Carlos Vela Carlos Vela at the moment is a free agent <laughs> yeah. um, would Carlos Vela be welcomed at the LA Galaxy for you? Yeah, Carlos and I have a, a long relationship that goes back. And, you know, what I want for Carlos more than anything is for him to make the right decision for him and his family. Obviously, his talent uh, and his legacy is unprecedented. But, uh, yeah, as far as his Galaxy future, I wouldn't say. Let's talk about uh, seasons or end of the season. Last year didn't go as planned for the LA Galaxy. Greg Vanny's now been here for a few years, three years. Um, how much time does Greg Vanny have with you to work? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, this is a high pressure business, right? And we're always up against it. And so I don't necessarily look at last year as, as carrying over. And I don't necessarily think that, uh, you know, success is, you know, out of the gate means results, right? It's really about are we playing the way we want to play? Are we bringing guys along the way we need to bring them along? Are they developing? Is the group together? And, you know, one of the, the nice things about MLS is that we don't have a single table system. And right. so. Ultimately, the most important games are at the end of the season. And so, you know, the most important thing is to be making progress towards that. How much pressure is on you to produce a winner, to bring the Galaxy back on their winning ways? I mean, I think there's a lot. You know, I'm now 20 years in, the, you know, the sports industry and working for pretty high pressure front offices. So I'm kind of used to it. Like the three years I was at the <laughs> league office, it felt like something was wrong. But that's also part of being in a big club. You know, I started with the New York Yankees, and it's the same thing. The expectation was that you win the World Series every year, and if you don't, you know, nobody should expect to keep their jobs. And so I, I think that pressure comes from being at a big club, from having passionate fans. And I would always take that over the alternative. Well, you, there were a lot of rumblings about Major League Soccer opening up the purse strings, maybe adding more to the salary cap. That wasn't done. Were you kind of let down by it? Do you understand it? What, what's your hope going forward? My sense is that the league is really trying to figure out what the best way forward is, right? And so maybe... You know, some people want to say, oh, it's a fourth DP or it's another million dollars in a salary cap. But but I get the sense talking to some of the people I used to work with that they're really actually they're thinking bigger. And, they're, you know, the most important thing is if you're going to do something revolutionary to, to don't do it half baked. And so I'd rather the league take some time to figure it out than try and do something that's a half measure. Well, I imagine the Galaxy are salary compliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah OK. <laughs> uh, a team that was under scrutiny for maybe not being so was Inter Miami. H how is it? that they're salary compliant. I mean, because you look at, from a neutral standpoint, it's Busquets, it's Luis Suarez, it's Messi, it's Jordi Alba, you know, now it's it's um, Redondo. It's all these great players, Gomez, and you're like, how is this happening? I'm sure there are mumblings around your peers. What's going on there? You know, it, and uh, trying to stitch me up here on this no, one. No, 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 <laughs> I want to know as well. Look, everybody wants to know. because. Well, we hear these anonymous sources. Right. We, you know, Sammy and I on the show, we've, we've spoken about it. It sounds like sour grapes, right? Right. Because how do you prove it? You know, you know listen, I, 
would I have a hard time believing that you know great players who have made a lot of money and had a lot of success in their career want to finish their time playing in Miami with with Leo Messi right. in, in a new environment. I mean, that's it's not the hardest sell. You know, even here in Southern California, I think uh, the city sells itself. And so, you know, it's it's a credit to Chris Henderson and the job that group has done and finding creative ways under the salary budget to, to get these guys in. But, you know, there's there's opportunities off the field to earn a lot of money as well. So I don't necessarily think it's uh, something I lose a lot of sleep over. I'm, I'm happy for him. I think it's great for the league. Uh, and, you know, uh, we'll keep on pushing on our end. Two more questions really quick. You, you know, while we're talking about Messi, Don Garber had mentioned his kind of displeasure and, and maybe labeled it as lazy journalism only covering Messi. Um, what are your thoughts uh, on, on MLS being reliant on Messi? you think we're going to move past that? Or do you think it's, hey, there's a reason we're covering Messi? Yeah, I mean, I, it's tough, right? I think when Messi signed the next day, you know, MLS and Messi were the most Googled things right. in a 24 hour period, right? I think I saw something today that Messi is the most popular sp athlete in the US. US, right? Yeah. So um, that's that's something that happens, right? And that's not MLS's fault. That's not the media's fault. That's just the reality of having a a mega star like Leo in the league. And, and for me, I think what's just the most important is that we don't lose sight of all the other you know, great players, all the other great clubs, all the great things that are happening in the league. And, and it is a bit of a, you know, balancing act you're going to have to do, but I'm not, a, I don't have a problem with it. You know, a long time ago for you around, uh, I used to play here and I got my start playing in these Open Cup games. You know, that's kind of made a name for myself. And on the way to winning a double and one of those being the Open Cup trophy, um, it was important to me. Now I'm seeing that players still hold that tournament with great value, but maybe at a, an administrative role, not so much. How do you view the Open Cup? Is it something that's kind of like a, a stone in the road for you? Or do you think it's it could be of use to you? What would you do with the Open Cup? And really saving the easy questions for the end, <laughs> huh? No, I, listen, I think the Open Cup is massively important. It's got a lot of great history. You know, the reality is, um, you know, MLS is growing in terms of the number of games that we're playing. Greg talked about it today in our press conference, but schedule congestion is a real thing. I look at the Open Cup, uh, you know, just like any massive cup tournament in any other country, right? You, you use the early rounds as a great way to introduce your young players, whether that's academy guys or guys in the fringe of the roster and compete maybe against some lower division teams, which is also a really great way to celebrate, you know, American soccer as you, you might be going to a stadium that doesn't have a second deck or has, you know, chain link uh, fences with fans behind them. And then as you kind of move on in the tournament, you know, your team comes together and, and maybe you start putting more of your, uh, your first team out there. But I appreciate that it's a, it's a lot of things to juggle. Um, but I think the Open Cup is a, you know, uh, historic, important tournament. And we will certainly find a way to get a lot out of well, it. Well, thank you so much, man. Thanks, Appreciate sir. your time. All right. All right, here's a look at the LA Galaxy off-season. What an off-season it was. Very busy one for Will Koontz, his first uh, full off season there in charge of LA. Herc, your thoughts on the conversation with the new GM of the LA Galaxy and generally what you saw from the Galaxy uh, in their opener over the weekend? Yeah, I like what they're doing. Listen, it's not, I spoke to, to Will about this, Will Koontz, the general manager of the LA Galaxy, and it's not easy kind of having to administrate somebody else's mess. He didn't say that, I will say that mm -hmm. for him. Uh, but it's part of the reason why he's in that job, why he has a job. So it's going to take some time to offload some of the bad contracts or bad decisions that the regime before him made. But you could already see his imprint just in this transfer window alone, the players going out and the amount of players that are going out and the ages of those players and the players coming in and the type of player that was brought in and the ages of those players. And I think it was on display this past weekend. You look at a player like uh, Joseph Painstill and how dynamic he is, how explosive he was, how good he is in the 1v1 dribble, uh, how vertical. He's 26 years old. You look at a guy who came on um, in the second half, Gabriel Peck, the Brazilian, looked ridiculous in a very brief amount of time. He's another guy in his early 20s. He was part of the U23 uh, Brazilian Olympic uh, program or their intent of an you know, Olympic team. So... Uh, it's what they're going for. There is a model. They're trying to do it, and it's going to take time. And I know fans don't want to hear that. I'm one of those mm -hmm. people who don't believe that everything has to take time. But the three-year plan, is, Herc. Three-year plan. Yeah, and we will get to that three-year plan because that was one of a uh -huh. an interview I had with Greg Vanny where I mentioned mm -hmm. the three-year plan, and the the response was very telling. And I'll let fans judge for themselves. But going back to Will Koontz, there was a mess before him, so it'll be very mm -hmm. interesting to see how much he can do and how far he can go trying to clean up that mess. Yeah, like I said before, I think if you're a Galaxy fan coming off this game, you're probably frustrated. You're definitely frustrated, 
but you ought to be optimistic. Uh, I thought Pencil was great. Maybe some better decision-making in the final third, and this game ends, you know, 3-1, 4-1. The other player, I know he missed the penalty, man, but Ricky Pooch, I mean, he was absolutely running this game for a minute. We've seen that from him in the past. It, it kind of comes in ebbs and flows, but when he's on, uh, he can definitely be one of the best in the league. So I think the Galaxy are looking good, Herc, but I have a question. Who's going to get the goals for this team? Great Is question. Jovalic enough? I mean, uh, you asked you ask Will Koontz there, do they need a big name? Do they just need a better striker? Because if the Galaxy are going to go where they're going to go, man, I know Jovalic has been good in the past, off the bench, but this is a different role now. He's got to be the guy, and uh, at least in the opener, didn't look like it. Yeah, so Jovalic at his best is a very good forward, and he's proven it many times but he's very inconsistent. And mm -hmm. when you're at this level and you're a big market team like Los Angeles, your nine has to be a guy that is consistently good, consistently a threat. And that's been the issue with Joe Vulich. Uh, and I agree with you. I think if there's one thing besides health missing on this team, it would be probably a, a killer nine, a, a nine of, of massive, massive name and worth. And uh, listen, they, they still have something up their sleeve. They still are Los Angeles, and I know many have referred to the Galaxy as the 90s actor trying to make uh, a, a return mm -hmm. into Hollywood, but this 90s actor has five Academy Awards and the most powerful agent in the industry, Los Angeles. You heard Will Koontz. It attracts a lot of people.